Hi everybody, my name is Shauna and today I'm going to be going over the use of gated CNNs for nuclei segmentation in breast cancer images. Nuclei segmentation is an essential pre-processing step for cancer classification, recognition, and grading, so any errors that occur in this step will propagate into the accuracy of these tasks. While neural networks have been shown to outperform classical segmentation methods, there's still a lot of room for improvement. In this work, we want to focus on improving the boundary segmentation, and this is especially important for cases where nuclei are nearby, touching or overlapping one another. The general problem is that uh, nuclei tend to be registered as a single clump in these cases. So if you look here, the ground truth is showing that these two nuclei are touching, but the model predicts them as a single clump. And this comes into play when we use segmentation maps to extract features, such as the number of nuclei, their shape, their size. So these are all being affected by this error. We employ a two-stream gated CNN architecture to try to improve boundary segmentation. We can look at this in three parts. The first is the regular stream, which can be any encoder decoder semantic segmentation network. In our case, we predict three classes, the nuclei, boundary, and background class. Then there's the edge stream, which processes edge information parallel to the regular stream and predicts only boundaries. Um, this uses the image gradients and high level activation from the regular stream feature maps to process only relevant boundary information. And by using these gated convolutional layers, we can deactivate the non-relevant information from the edge stream. These include things like noise and non-shape information. Then the third part is the loss, and this is composed of three separate losses. There's the semantic loss, which supervises the regular stream, the edge loss, which supervises the edge stream, and the dual task loss, which has two objectives. The first is to prevent non-boundary pixels from dominating the segmentation loss, and the second is to ensure consistency between the predictions of both streams. In our experiments, we use three multi-center breast cancer data sets. So as you can see, they vary quite heavily in staining and contrast. We trained all of our models using one data set and tested on all three. We trained four models. The first two were baselines of UNET and R2 UNET. Then we trained two GCNN models where we used the UNET and R2 UNET as the backbone regular stream architecture. And we basically wanted to compare the baselines to the GCNN versions to see if GCNN architecture is causing an improvement in segmentation. To validate our results, we used the dice similarity coefficient. We found that the GCNNs consistently outperformed standalone baseline architectures. This was true for the entire data set, and even more so for a subset of images that only contained close proximity nuclei. We also noticed that not only were the boundary segmentations improving, but the nuclei segmentations too. Furthermore, by testing on all three different multi-center data sets, we were able to see that these models generalize well, since all three test sets had an improvement in accuracy. To visualize these improvements, let's look at some examples. So we noticed the boundary segmentation improved, um, and here's a clear example of that, where we have two separate nuclei here. The UNET considers them as a single nuclei, but the GCNN UNET is able to distinguish between the two. This is true also for the R2 UNET and the GCNN R2 UNET. But another interesting thing we noticed was an increase in nuclei segmentation, and especially for nuclei that were faint or low contrast. So here we can see that this is quite a faint nuclei, and it was missed by the UNET and R2 UNETs. But the GCNN versions were able to detect it, and quite accurately. So we believe that by focusing on edge information, we're actually able to detect nuclei that were once being missed. That's it for my presentation. Thank you so much for listening.